at the time when the nucleus was discovered by Rutherford, only two atomic particles, proton and electron, were known. If only protons are inside the nucleus, then the charge of the nucleus would be A units, where A is the mass number of the atom. But it was already observed that, except for hydrogen, the nuclear charge G is found to be always less than A, usually less than A by 2. To get around this difficulty, it was assumed early that, in addition to the protons, atomic nuclei contain just enough electrons to cancel the positive charge of the extra protons. That is, if A is the number of protons, then they were supposed to contain A minus Z electrons. These electrons would contribute only a small amount to the mass of the nucleus, but together with the protons, they would make the net charge equal to Z units as required. So it seemed plausible to consider the atom as consisting of nucleus made up of A protons and A minus Z electrons, with G additional electrons outside the nucleus to make the entire atom electrically neutral. For example, an oxygen atom would have a nucleus with 16 protons and 8 electrons, with 8 additional electrons outside the nucleus. This model of the nucleus is known as the proton-electron hypothesis of nuclear composition. The proton-electron hypothesis seemed to be consistent with the emission of alpha and beta particles by atoms of radioactive substances. Since it was assumed that the nucleus contained electrons, the explanation of beta decay was no problem. It also seemed reasonable that an alpha particle could be formed in the nucleus by the combination of four protons and two electrons. Although the proton-electron hypothesis was satisfactory in some respects, it led to serious difficulties and had to be given up. One of the most serious difficulties arose from the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics. If the electron has to be within the nucleus, then its de Broglie wavelength had to be of the order of size of the nucleus. Since the size of a nucleus is in the order of one Fermi, so we can write the uncertainty in position of the electron as delta x equal to 10 raised to power minus 15 meter. Now if delta p is the uncertainty in momentum, then from the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, delta p times delta x must be greater than or equal to h cross upon 2, that is delta p is greater than or equal to h cross upon 2 times delta x, which is equal to 197.46 MeV per C Fermi upon 2 times 1 Fermi, which comes out to be 98.7 MeV per C. From the formula E square is equal to PC square plus M naught C square whole square, the energy of the electron corresponding to this uncertainty in momentum is E equal to under root delta PC square plus M naught C square whole square. Here M naught is the rest mass of the electron which is equal to 0.511 MeV per C square. So we can write E equal to under root 98.7 MeV whole square plus 0.511 MeV whole square and which comes out to be 98.7 MeV. And the kinetic energy of the electron will be K equal to E minus M naught C square which is equal to 98.7 MeV minus 0.511 MeV and that will be equal to 98.2 MeV. Now if you calculate the speed of the electron from this kinetic energy, then it will be V equal to under root 2K by M0 and which is equal to under root 2 times 98.2 MeV upon 0.511 MeV per C square and that comes out to be 20C, that is 20 times the speed of light. So the confinement of an electron to a space as small as the nucleus would result in the circumstances that the electron's speed would be around 20 times the speed of light, which is not possible according to the special theory of relativity. But how could scientists account for the circumstances that electrons cannot be confined within the nucleus, yet they emerge from the nucleus in beta decay? Well, there is a story behind this problem. One day Heisenberg and his assistant were contemplating this problem while sitting in a cafe across from a building housing a swimming pool. Heisenberg suggested a possible approach to this problem. He told his assistant, you see people going into the building fully dressed and you can also see they are coming out fully dressed. 
but how does that mean that they also swim fully dressed? He told his assistant, you see electrons coming out of the nucleus in beta decay and occasionally being captured by the nucleus, but that doesn't mean that electrons remain in the nucleus. Perhaps the electrons are created in the process of emission from the nucleus. Later on, it was also observed that the proton-electron hypothesis violates the angular momentum coupling rule. Let's understand it by taking an example of deuteron. The deuteron is the nucleus of the isotope of hydrogen, deuterium. The deuterium has A equal to 2 and Z equal to 1. So from the proton-electron hypothesis, there would be two protons and one electron. Since proton and electron both have a spin equal to plus minus half h cross, which can simply be written as plus minus half, because in natural unit, h cross equal to 1. If you want more information about natural unit, then you can click here and watch the video of natural units. So for proton and electron, we have a spin equal to plus minus half. Here plus sign is for the spin uh, along plus z axis and minus sign is for the spin along minus z axis. When you add the spin vectors of two protons and one electron, then the possible spins of deuteron would be either plus minus half or plus minus three by two. But the measured ground state spin of deuteron is calculated as plus one. And it is also a major problem for the proton electron hypothesis. Now let's prove the proton electron hypothesis wrong by calculating the magnetic moment value of the nucleus. The magnetic moment of electron is equal to E h cross by two me where Me is the mass of the electron and the magnetic moment of the proton is equal to Eh cross by 2 Mp where Mp is the mass of the proton. Since the mass of the proton is almost 1836 times the mass of the electron, so the magnetic moment of the electron would be almost 1836 times the magnetic moment of the proton. Now if an electron would exist in the nucleus, then the nuclear magnetic moment would be of the order of magnetic moment of the electron but the measured magnetic moment of nuclei are very much less than the magnetic moment of the electron, thus the electron cannot reside inside the nucleus. Also, the presence of some electrons in the nucleus and rest as peripheral around the nucleus exhibit the dual role of electrons in an atomic structure, which is difficult to understand. So this is all about the problems behind the proton-electron hypothesis of nuclear compositions. Thank you so much for watching this video.